everyone, I, uh, my voice is already broken and I don't have a mix, so I will do my best. And um, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the invitation of this closing keynote. <coughs> and um, yeah, it's even more special for me to do this keynote here in uh, Rotterdam. Because I could start this uh, keynote in Dutch. Welcome iedereen. Because, yeah, Rotterdam has a lot of meaning for me for m some reasons that I'm going to explain you. So, I make just a quick difference here in my title for the <laughs> beginning. Let's call it Rotterdam Driven Development. Uh, and after my keynote, <laughs> if we share a drink together, uh, you can call me Seb, Sebastian, but uh, you can also call me Boss. <laughs> I will be more than happy if you call me Bas because I'm used to be called Bas when I'm in the Netherlands. So yes, I'm I'm half Dutch. My mother is Dutch. My father is French, but I was born here in Leiden, probably somewhere there. Leiden is there, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I live there. I spent my nine first years of my life in. Ravenningen. Uh, and I had high quality education, <laughs> as you can imagine, and uh, best food ever. <laughs> uh, that is how I was raised. Um, but I was living there, but my mother, she came from Rotterdam. And there I had my opa and my oma living. And yeah, I think every weekend we were driving to Rotterdam to visit them. And um, yeah, when I saw the Brinard work that you can see live if you look behind, uh, I was really excited because that was meaning that we were approaching. And uh, for, for the Dutch people, that was the moment that in the car we were singing, the dine, the dine, the dine, the dine, you know? Um, and this picture is not really accurate for me because I always knew a single bridge. And in 1990, I think they added the second bridge. But for me, it was just one bridge, okay? And um, yeah, my first un encounter with IT, with video games, believe it or not, it was at my grandparents' place. Because my grandparents had a video console. Can you believe that? When, <laughs> when I t tell this to French people, they don't believe me. First time I played a video game was at the place of my grandparents. Uh, I had so much fun with this video game. And um, yeah, my grandfather, my opa, he worked his whole life at the seaport, at the airport here from Rotterdam, one of the biggest of the world. And each job he was working in this train and he was taking ballots offloading the boat or loading the boat and then he got a bit promoted and he was managing all of that and instead of ballots it were containers and so basically what he did he was orchestrating containers <laughs> <laughs> if he was here today and I told him hey you know Opa I'm also orchestrating containers the whole day we will have a good laugh but yeah that was just for the joke um, my grandfather my Opa I learned from him from him two main lessons that I'm still uh, applying today in my job first of all he was a maker a hacker we call that today a life hacker when I need some special furnitures in my room uh, he will make it for me he made my bed I remember and this hacking culture he transmitted that to me the second thing and just let me just because it's really hot in here <laughs> you can see that you are a uh, Scala company <laughs> I'm joking uh, second thing he learned to me was Passion. <laughs> My opa was an absolute fan of fighters. And as you know, in the world, there are only two <coughs> football clubs. 
<laughs> Olympique de Marseille, <laughs> and fired. Okay? And it was real passion. I mean, on the Sunday, when I visited him, if Feyenoord was playing, if they won the game, then it was French fries, good meat, it was awesome. If they lost the match, he was so pissed off, he was just dropping some bottle on the table, some ham, and yeah, we had really bad food. But <laughs> he learned that, I learned that from him, that you can be really passionate. And, well, my keynote is about passion-driven development, okay? And uh, that's my Oma with my son, just on the previous slide. That was my Opa with my daughter. That's my Oma with my son. Unfortunately, my Opa had not the chance to uh, meet my son. My Oma, she was awesome. She, she, she teach me so many things, but mainly the, the the no bullshit spirit, <laughs> and to never give up. She told me endless stories when she was living here, and that Rotterdam was completely destroyed by the war, and she was walking in through this. And she explained me how everyone together built this, this, um, this city, okay? Um, when I moved back to France, um, that my opa was not there, she was in a care house because she couldn't live on her own. But every time that I had to, a chance to be close to Rotterdam, like going to Divox, I always managed to find a half day to visit her. Unfortunately, the last time I was here in Rotterdam, that was three months ago, it was for her funeral. So for me, it's really emotional. Um, that was just the Rotterdam part because I could not escape speaking about Rotterdam because I'm here. And now we can go on to the real subject of my keynote about passion-driven development, okay? Um, before that, I would like you, all of you, to close your eyes for 20 seconds and try to remember the really first line of code that you wrote and the moment that you enter the enter uh, keystroke Try to remember that moment. <coughs> it's a really important moment, and then we can go home. Okay? So if the connection is good, yeah, awesome. Uh, oh, there's some sound, I think. Yeah? We don't care about sound. Okay, so try to remember. Maybe you were eight years old. Maybe you were 15. <laughs> maybe it was yesterday. Who knows? Okay, um, woo. is there anyone, whoop, 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 whoop. is there anyone that would like to share his memory? Don't worry if you're shy, it won't break the script of my keynote. But just to tell you, every time I give this keynote, there's at least one or two person that say, oh yeah, my first line of code was this, this, this. No one? I tried to kill my first line of code was 10 prints hello. Okay, thank you so much because you make the transition really awesome. We will see why. Anyone else? Public void name. Public void name. So you started with uh, Java, right? Okay, my first line of code was, uh, I think, so 35 years ago. That's <coughs> a real picture of me with my father. And this picture is probably from Scheveningen, the, uh, on, on, at the French school of Scheveningen. And I remember um, it was cold in the winter. Uh, it was probably raining. We are in the Netherlands, of course. And I was playing with my Legos, and my father come back from school with a big, with a big box, and he say, "Seb, I have a computer in there, and would you like to help me set it up? And uh, we can try it together." And I was all excited. So he put out a big monitor and a small computer. It was. Uh, well, it was not exactly this one. It was a, um, another version, but it was a French computer, Thompson. Uh, French brand, that's why you don't hear about it today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we had fun with it. Um, <coughs> and he started up. He started up, and what appears? This. A basic command line. And that's 
what I'm using here is a wheel emulator of this computer. And he gives me a little leaflet, and I start looking in it. And I remember the, the one of the first thing I did was something like
for the for the kids. Um, so all the power energies that can put it into code. You teach a computer, and it's not a computer teaching you. Okay? And that language, I removed the slide, I don't know why. I'm sure some of you, I don't know in the Netherlands, if this was something, but there was a yet language called <coughs> Logo, with the turtle. Anyone know about Logo? Yeah, I one fur, almost a half, okay. Um, so that's the, that's the French version. Uh, though I can just say French uh, command here, and uh, I put AV, which is the abbreviation for avant, go forward, and I give it the number. And I have my turtle moving on 50 steps. Okay, and then I can say TD, tourne droite, turn <laughs> to the right, and I can give it some degree. Okay, and again, make a move. And with that, I really started to have fun. It's also that way that I started to discover the concept of a loop, for instance. Because you had this command, repeat, which means repeat. <laughs> repeat four times. OK. Uh, and now I have to remember where the bracket is. Yes, yes. Repeat four times, move 50 steps. Turn right, 90 degrees, and that's it. It's this, yes. Okay, and wow, here I have the square. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could, but uh, um, <coughs> it's short on time, but that's also when I discovered how you can make functions and pass power meters to function. And because it was in French, I understood everything, and then I really started to have fun. I tried, I, I started to make my first games, well, more or less um, text-based adventures games. But yeah, that's how I entered the IT world. Then I grew up. Um, I didn't went to an engineer school in the beginning because I was, like Steph said, I was a real grunge and I liked to party a lot and play the guitar. But later on, I had the chance to, to go into IT again. And I was a fresh developer, <laughs> a junior developer. And when you're a young developer, you want to try everything out. You want to do everything. I was the everyday, uh, I'm not even sure it exists anymore, the server side that comes. And I was reading all the news and every new framework, I was trying it out. But we were pretty lucky uh, 15 years ago because there were that not much frameworks every day. I was using struts, and then spring came. Um, but it was all right. Now I feel so sorry about the juniors today when they want to start doing some front end. <laughs> <laughs> I think since I started this keynote 10 minutes ago, uh, five new frameworks have been released already. <laughs> seven. Make it seven now, okay. So, I could speak about the hype around this. I could also speak about the packaging tools. Um, it's also a crazy word. Uh, NPM, Maven. Um, for years and years, um, everyone was making joke of Maven, downloading the internet. And then NPM came, and finally, they, we could make the joke around them. Because they just suck the whole internet like we do. But let's not uh, speak about that hype. It's not important. We can deal with that. I will come back on this later. Um, oh, yeah. We could speak about the whole hype around, around uh, containers. So in the beginning, when I started to work, we had application server. It was working really nice. I took here a totally random application server. Maybe that some people know it. It's Wildfly from Red Hat. Oh, sorry, it looks like I'm getting a message from my boss. Yeah? Oh, oh sure, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, 
yeah. So imagine you have a <laughs> you have, you have an application server like Wester, and it was it was great. You you package your war, your ear, and you drop it in, and it was just working. The application server was handling for you uh, the transactions, the logging, uh, some kind of metrics, and it was really nice. And then they decided, oh yeah, all the the the, the, the DevOps story came. We had to work with smaller workloads, uh, the whole microservices, and we started to make tiny apps, little apps, fat jars, let's say so. And that became a bit difficult to manage as well. And so we say, oh, well, let's, uh, let's put that in a container. So we started to put all these jars in containers. And that was nice, but then we all, all these containers, and we say, oh, this would be nice if we can have something to manage these uh, containers. Okay, and then we have Kubernetes. <laughs> and they say, yeah, but you know, it's nice. <coughs> But stuff like login, metrics, transaction security, it's, it's all around. Maybe we can do something around that. And that's the new trend. Uh, it's, yeah, now we go for service mesh with sidecar proxies that we deploy everywhere that will manage that. So more or less, we're just reinventing the application server. <laughs> but yeah, in the cloud. Um, if you know, want to know more about that, there's a talk about <coughs> this. Less trollish than me, to be honest. A really serious talk uh, from Debug from two years ago. Uh, Kubernetes, your next application server. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's uh, not really the issue. We can deal with um, hype, with technology hype. That is how we feed our soul of developers, and we should tr continue to do that. Though I don't see any issue in this. Uh, if there are any Scrum Master or Agile coaches in the room, I'm sorry oh. you're not going to like this part <laughs> <laughs> at all. I think the biggest danger, the biggest threat to our, in our world in IT are not the technologies, but the methodologies, okay? Um, Let's talk about Scrum, because Scrum rules the world. Apparently safe, which is worse, is taking over, but yeah. Let's keep it a bit about Scrum. Scrum, oh my god. Uh, to be honest, a few years ago when I discovered that, oh, I was, oh, yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> oh, I like it. Small feedback loop with the customer, small workloads, and yeah, we have retrospectives and stuff like that. And Slowly uh, <laughs> became <laughs> precious. Um, well, at least not me, but a lot of people around me were completely set into the process of Scrum. Way too much. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about the uh, business around all this stuff. It's easy to get to be a Scrum master. Uh, it's a real business around. I remember a story of someone that went to a Scrum training and he was there, he was the only one because the other people didn't appear. Uh, and after a day, <laughs> who was the Scrum Master? So probably do team, <coughs> team building with himself? I don't know. Um, yeah, you play with Legos when you do the Scrum training. When I told that to my son, he said, Dad, I want to become a Scrum Master. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and just to finish about. Certification. <laughs> I really like this one. <laughs> metrics. Oh, Scrim Agile all goes about the metrics. Not because we developers, we don't care about it, but managers love it. They really love it. We only do that for the manager. Uh, velocity, yeah. Oh, that was still in French. Um, that's a burn down chart. That's a real one <laughs> for my previous team. <laughs> As you can see, everyone <coughs> in the team loved Agile. <laughs> Just to see, yeah, it was a senior team and we never really uh, went with that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, user stories. <coughs> user stories. Yeah, this 
subscribe with the plan. Yeah, it's just a jerk ticket. You create a ticket, it's a bug. Um, and then the, these bugs fill up. And I'm sure that won't surprise you. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> For sure it's the truth. Okay? Um, <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jira. Okay, uh, something else. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that will be hard to translate. But um, uh, that was for the French version. Here, what I want to cover here is uh, spoke. Uh, how do you call it again? Uh, poking, uh, poking, uh, poker scoring. Um, poker planning, where you say, uh, yeah, this bug is three, and the other one say it's five, and the other one is eight, and um, usually I play this video, and that's uh, everyone knows him. Um, I can just t try to do to, to the dubbing. He say, yeah, everyone knows that one plus one is two, but is that true? He say maybe one plus one is uh, zero. He said. Or maybe one plus one is eleven. <laughs> you should see that video. <laughs> uh, sorry. And for me, that's exactly what uh, poker planning is. Okay. Uh, funny story. We were doing that in my team, and people were. Uh, we decided that we move a label from the screen from the upper left to the upper right, or something like that. And then we had to do the the poker all together. And no one was agreeing on the number. Some had three or uh, five. And I was on my computer and I said, you say, you, you know what? I just fixed the issue. <laughs> I commented, I sent the pull request. And then I said, stop, it's fixed. Move to the next one. Stand up meetings, yeah. <laughs> Stand up meetings is funny in the beginning. <laughs> can be efficient if you really keep it to stand up. That you will say, I've done this yesterday, I have this issue, and today I will do this. But it always ends up with people uh, telling their life and <laughs> mindless <laughs> discussions. One way of fixing that will be to uh, spanking. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm sure it will be way faster. <laughs> Okay, um, but this is just tooling. <laughs> um, for me, there's an even bigger danger. Let me just put my... <laughs> Don't see any troll, it's a keyboard here. <laughs> okay. <sighs> we are in the beginning of the IT revolution. It's true, it's just starting. And 150 years ago, it was the Industrial Revolution that started uh, in England. And does anyone know who that is? It's not my father. <laughs> <laughs> anyone? Adam Smith. Grandfather? Uh, sorry? <laughs> no, it's, it's Adam Smith. Adam Smith. One day he entered a pin factory, a pin shop, and he said, passionate people making pins. And he said, yeah, it's great, but we can do that way better. Let's divide the creation of a, of a pin in small batches. And he was really at the beginning of the theory of division of uh, work. One famous example is after him is uh, Ford with his car, Henry Ford. And uh, yeah, this is how it started. And dividing jobs in small sprints, you see where I'm coming? Um, yeah, that's a book. When before I did IT, I uh, studied a lot of sociology. And this book uh, explained how if you divide too much the work of the worker, you will remove all the, the passion, uh, all the knowledge of this. Um, <coughs> last year at DMOX Friends was a really nice uh, keynote. And uh, the keynote uh, speak about the term of proletarian, which is not, 
n not for someone that is uh, poor, but most of them poor or rich and are poor. But um, yeah, removing the soul, the passion of your work. And um, I'm afraid if we push too much all these uh, techniques, all these mythologies in our work, that is what is going to happen. Um, at the time of the factories, they have this. Now we have this. <laughs> in big factories, they have machines that make other machines, and I don't know what. With AI, what could happen is this. And I'm always proud to put a Terminator GIF in my presentation. It's a, a challenge that I set to myself. So. So, um, can we go back to... <laughs> yeah. I so sometimes I can just stay there for 15 minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> Should we go back to waterfall? Well, why, why, why not? If it works for your project. In some projects it works. My most successful project, which I did here in the Netherlands for Aegon, uh, we were doing waterfall. Well, pragmatic protocol, and it was just working. So, uh, what I think we need to do is to come back to some um, passion to the code. We have to preserve that. Uh, <coughs> there's a whole movement around that called software craftsmanship. Love your code, polish your code, okay? And one difference, if you remember the, the pin factory, Maybe one of the people there had a really good technique of making pins, and he had a friend working in a other pin factory, and he walked out to the pin and he said, hey, listen, you should have do that this way or this way. <laughs> well, look, in IT, it's so easy, especially if you open your code, your source code. That's just because I'm right at, I talk about open source. So small workshops, software craftsmanship, open to the world and you can rule the world. Read the code, that's Quentin, if you know him. Um, it's important to read the code of other people. Love your code. Don't be shy, don't be, don't be afraid of your old code. Um, and then I'm, oh yeah, like my grandfather, hack the world, have this hacking culture. Uh, don't be afraid to hack <coughs> stuff. Even if it's uh, screw up your sprint, we don't care. Hack the work, be creative. Propagate Mindstorm. Maybe for some of us, it's too late. Am I late or? No, it's, no, it's okay. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, propagate the Mindstorm. Um, we had to tell our kids how they should do it. We had to transmits her the passion of code. This slide, this picture is from Divox friends two years ago. I know some of you, uh, Nicola, I don't know if Nicola is there. Oh, he's here. You were attending this talk. That was a really special moment for me. I was on stage with my, uh, with my kids. Um, because yeah, the new generation is important. Uh, the, the, the old, the old generation, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really an issue. You know, because, uh, yeah, IT was already there when, uh, <laughs> when they were old. And they don't really need it. Um, and it's not really a problem. We, all of here, we, we, we grew up with IT. We were putting sound cards, graphic cards in our computer. Uh, moving the jumpers, we understood what it was. But the new generation, the new breed, they, they have no idea what is behind a tablet, what is behind a computer. It's all magic for them. We come back to this black magic stuff. Look, yeah, hey, that won't work. <laughs> you can try it again, no. <laughs> so it's so important that we teach them what code is. Because, yeah, that's a famous code, quote that we all know. So far it's eating a word, 
code is low, it's true today, but it will be even more true in the coming year. In the health, in the transportation, with cars. So even if your kids don't want to become a developer, you must at least understand what code is. It does not have to be black magic for him. And um, there are several ways of doing that. So I showed you a logo with the turtle. Um, what you can show to your kids is Scratch. Does anyone know what Scratch is? Oh, a lot of people. So, um, how much time do I have left? As much as you want. As much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me just give you a quick for, for those that don't know Scratch a quick demo of Scratch uh, because Scratch is a bit like Logo, because but instead of that you are creating uh, blocks. You are assembling blocks. Okay, uh, here it's in French, it's a bit tiny. I will look. You know what? Let me be crazy. Let's put it in Dutch. Nederlands. Yeah. 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 <coughs> <coughs> wow. I never saw it in Nederlands. So here you have our sprite, our cat, Scratch. And we can uh, af uh, affect him some blocks. And he will do stuff like uh, name him stuff. Uh, do 10 steps. Oh, nice, okay. But um, what <coughs> I want to make him uh, walk the whole time. Uh, let's go to... Yes, okay. Wanneer op de groene vlag wordt gezet, when you click the green flag, then something will happen. Uh, and we go here in the uh, Okay, let me put it in back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yes, but I just realized not everyone is Dutch here, so let me put it back in English. Yeah, yeah. I could do it. I swear, I can show it tonight if you want. Okay, so let's go to control. And uh, let's say repeat. Uh, no, let's say repeat forever. Repeat forever motion here. Move 10 steps. Okay? And here we go. Oh, and now it gets moving away. Oh, and move back here. Okay. Oh, that was really fast. Okay. Um, maybe I can do something about that. Let me see it here in control. There's something that could help me. Uh, it's not in control. Where is it again? In sensor. No, it's not in sensor. Bounce. It's a uh, event. Sorry. Here. Uh, it's in movement. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, it's in movement. Put it back in French. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put it back in French. Um, if on the edge, bounce. Yeah, sorry. If on the edge, bounce. Okay, here we go. And uh, yeah, now he's up and left. That's not a problem. You say set rotation style, left, right. Okay? And uh, yeah, there you are. But, uh, but he's not really walking. He's more uh, skating. Uh, maybe we can do something about it. And uh, what's nice on Scratch, you have sprites, uh, costumes for a sprite. And look here, the second one, you move it. So maybe if we go to uh, look, we have something like uh, next costume. Oh yeah, let's put the uh, next costume here. Oh, no. <laughs> and now he's uh, walking a bit, a bit fast. And um, control. And asleep. I, I add asleep. One second is a bit too much. So I make it here uh, zero dot two seconds. That works well. Okay, and here we have our cats walking. And the background is a bit sad. This white background. So let me let me add the background. And uh, let me put this one. Blue sky. Now oh, now it's uh, walking in the sky. But let me put that here. Okay. So and it's really easy. And here I'm just showing you. The bare minimum. You can make interaction with keystrokes. Uh, you can make games. Even me, I'm still playing with uh, Scratch. And it's online. You can create an account for free. Uh, it's a MIT that makes that, so it's not really commercial stuff. <laughs> and uh, the awesome thing is, once you have created your project, when your kid has created his project, he can share it to the whole world. And uh, everyone can look to your project. You can fork it, we call it remix it, uh, and there's a whole community. So if you want to share also the values of uh, sharing your knowledge while learning code, Scratch is the perfect one, okay? 
Um, let me see if I have any slides left. Because because of my Europism slides, I changed a bit. No, that was probably it. Um, again, it was a huge honor to be here. I hope you enjoyed this closing keynote. Now I know it's party time. Uh, I'm here the whole evening, so if you want to speak about everything but agile, <laughs> you can speak to me. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>